Carved by John Wallace, this pole resembles one from the deserted height of the village watchman stands guard at the top. Below are two eagles. Underneath are painted faces representing mountains and clouds, the habitat of eagles. Below is a small carved face, a personification of the undersea home of the supernatural blackfish, which holds a seal. A duck-like beaked creature is the mythical seal monster. The small face under the beak is the monster's spirit tower. Power. Tentacles with a face beneath represent a devilfish in the act of devouring the human being at the base of the pole. <laughs> That's the devil fish. That one has wings on it. The Tangent Pole was copied from Cat Island. A similar pole can be found in Ketchikan. The fabled Kajuk bird sits on top of the pole. The undercoated portion of the pole symbolizes the lofty habitat of the bird and the high esteem in which the crest is held. Raven is the next figure, with his breast forming the headdresses of his wife, Fog Woman, wearing the labret in her lower lip. In her hands, she holds the first two salmon in the world, which she produced. The two large faces at the base represent the two slaves of Raven. Cat's Bear Wife, Pole 11. The barren tracks on this pole copied from a pole on Tongass Island symbolizes Cat's Bear Wife. Cat, a character out of the Tinglet mythology known across the country and, and claimed by many as an ancestor. He hunted grizzly bears for a living. After his death, his wife retreated into the hill country with songs of sorrow. The pole was carved to commemorate his bear wife. In 1985, carver Israel Shortridge replaced the bear portion of the pole. Raven at the head of Knops, copied from the Glingit pole on Tungus Island, a chief in a spruce root dance hat tops the pole. At the base is the chief, Raven at the head of Nass, from whom Raven stole daylight. The small human figure represents ancestors of the Raven clan who were benefited by the theft. The space between the top figure and the figures below represent high regard held for the chief. This entire area here, it's all wood. When the tide comes in on these parts, you see with the with the orange, it's all barnacles and stuff. When the tide comes in, this well, most of this part is underwater. You see this here. This is wood, and there's coal in between the crevices, like in between the cracks and all the grooves and stuff. And you can actually pick it out, like pull it out. And when you get closer up that way, and there's crabs and seashells. Like this one. <laughs> oh, it's fresh. You see a lot of empty crabs. There were birds probably up here ate them all. The eagles. You're gonna make fire. <laughs> it's too wet. It's not dry enough. This pole was also designed and carved by John Wallace. It was set up in 1941. The eagle at the top of the pole is the main crest of the Haida Eagle Clan. Other Eagle Clan symbols following the main crest are the beaver and bullhead. It was customary in Haida poles to carve the crests of a husband and wife. The wife would be the opposite clan, the Raven Clan, represented by the raven, the bear, and the blackfish beneath him, and the hoot owl at the base of the pole. Under the bear's feet are representations of two copper shields which were used as mediums of exchange. Each was named and its value increased with age and number of times it exchanged hands. The large human figure, second from the base, is the master carver or master carpenter who taught the height of wood carving. Faces carved on the necklace, originally carved in, on his fingernails, represent daily experiences and lessons learned, thus revealing the secrets of carving. Blackfish Pole. This Tlingit pole symbolizes the story of the origin of the blackfish, as told previously on the Wandering Raven Pole. The original was copied from Tongas Island, where it stood in front of the Forested Island House. The dorsal fin of a blackfish at the upper end of the pole extends from the raven, which is a special crest. The tiny faces on each blackfish represent the blowhole. 
Below the special crest is Nazi line, holding the blackfish by the tail. The human figure at the lower end represents the evil brothers-in-law. That's the blackfish, and by holding the by the tail. Look, there's a tour. <laughs> and the woman there holding a cat. <laughs> He's saying I'm a fog woman. Body <laughs> like. This Haida pole was designed and carved in 1947 by John Wallace from Heidelberg. In 1996, Nathan Jackson carved a second replica which now stands here. The hero of the story stands on top wearing a dark skin headdress. An art form frequently used by Haida craftsmen is to overlap a carved figure with the figure below, as illustrated here with the hero's feet carved into the ears of the human figure below. The hero holds in one hand the tail of an otter, and in the other a carved club. The carved club is symbolic of magical powers allowing him to outwit his enemies. Below is a drowned man holding onto two logs, being taken to the home of the land otters, represented by the human-like cave below the logs. At the base is a devil fish. Maybe look up.